Welcome to today's episode of the Declutter Hub podcast, your channel for super easy, no-nonsense advice on how to declutter and organize your home. Please welcome your hosts, professional organizers, Ingrid Jansen and Leslie Spellman. Hello and welcome listeners to episode 127 of the Declutter Hub podcast. I'm Ingrid. And I'm Leslie. If you have clutter and want to sort it out, this is the show for you. Now, in today's episode, Leslie and I are talking about a garage sale or a car boot sale, if that's a good idea or not. So, <laughs> Leslie, what, why are we talking about a garage sale or a car boot sale? Let's just say garage sale to make it easier for everybody. At the beginning of March, it's like freezing cold here, it's raining. What? Why are we talking about garage sales when it's like winter? <laughs> because, Ingrid, a car boot sale or a garage sale is something that people tend to plan for. And when people are decluttering, they keep things in their garage, in their loft, in their attic ready for that sometimes very elusive car boot sale. And so it's something that even though we can't do a car boot sale, there's an argument out that says we can't do a car boot sale or a garage sale at all this year because we're still in the middle of a pandemic. So depending on where you are in the world will we'll determine whether or not that's a possibility. But really today is about whether or not storing things up for a car boot sale is a good idea when you're decluttering. So let's just first then talk about a garage sale and a car boot sale because be the terminology as per usual will probably confuse some people here. So as far as we know, garage sales are very common in the U.S., I think. When you hear people talk about a garage sale, it's a lot of times in the U.S. or when, maybe when it's warmer weather, I'm not sure. And car boot sales is very much an English thing, isn't it? Yeah, we did a little bit of research, but of course our experience is kind of limited, isn't it, to Europe, U.S., and UK. So we haven't got any experience between us, unfortunately. We aim to change that, of course, of New Zealand, Australia, or Canada, which is where most of our listeners are coming from. And so we know that a car boot sale is a thing in the UK. We know that garage sale is in the US. So we assume that garage sales happen in Canada as well. And we think that car boot sales, and just in case you don't know what a car boot is, you're like, car boot, what's a car boot? If you're American, we're talking about a trunk. So basically in the UK, we sell things out of the back of our cars uh, because that's the way we roll here. Slightly different than you guys. And so if you're thinking, what's a car boot? It is the trunk of your car. So what we do is we go to a destination, not to our, our house. It's a field or a marketplace or something like that. We take our car, we unload it onto a table. And we sell things from a little table, don't we? So it's a little bit different. And the type of items that you would typically sell in a car boot sale and a garage sale are very different because of the size of things. I know, Leslie, it started to sound a little bit dodgy. We sell stuff from the trunk of our car. <laughs> so uh, I think it's a good idea that we explain it. This is actually something that happens a lot, especially around summertime, you know, when there's actually really a field and there's lots of people who kind of descend on that field all with their cars to put their tables out and all the stuff comes from the car booths. And it's a completely different experience. I never even thought about it that way, but I think you're right, of course. A car boot sale is probably more about toys and clothes and, and smaller items because it has to actually fit in your car. While a garage sale, you can probably just even sell like garden equipment or furniture or because of course you don't have to, you don't have to put it in your car. Huh, it's interesting. Yeah, so I'm happy to say that I have done both. I have done a garage sale. So as a lot of you know, I lived in the States back in 2001 to 2003 in New Jersey, which I absolutely loved. And we moved over there just for a couple of years. And so when we left, we did a garage sale to sell the stuff that we didn't want to bring back to the UK. So I did our experience of a garage sale in the US and what that looks like. I've also done probably two or three car boot sales here back in the late 90s, maybe early noughties, I'm trying to think, but it's been a long time. And I'm going to try to hold back my feelings about car boot sales because I'm not really, I need to put it out there. I'm not a big fan and I think that might come across in what we talk about today. Mm, interesting. We'll talk about why we're not a fan, because I think that's why this, we're doing this podcast, isn't it? We, we want to kind of talk through 
all of these things. And I've done a couple of car boot sales as well. Um, back in, it must have been like 2010, 2011, when the kids were still very small. And there was one actually like in the school grounds with the school, which is across the road from where I live. So it's like, this is the perfect opportunity to try this out. And I did another one on like a Sunday morning at six o'clock when you drive up and it's still dark. And I was like, what am I doing here at this time of night? I should be in bed on a Sunday morning. But there are people who love a garage sale or a car boot sale, right? They absolutely love them. Yeah. And so you've got those people who love the thrill of the sale, you know, so people who sell things from their house and car boot religiously every week. Do you know what I mean? So people who do that every Sunday, they go and they sell more stuff. They probably buy stuff at a car boot sale and sell it on as well. So they're more traders than anything else. And so you've got those people that love the thrill of the sale. And you've also got those people who love the thrill of the purchase. And so a car boot sale or a garage sale is perfect territory for somebody who likes to acquire. And we call that acquisition, not surprisingly, because it's acquire and that's yeah. acquisition. <laughs> and some people, as we know, and a lot of people who will be listening have over acquired in the past, shopped a little bit too much and it becomes a little bit compulsive. So sometimes a car boot or a garage sale can be a dangerous place to be if you fall into that category. Yes. And I, I think it's the same with people who always love to go to the to the charity shop or Goodwill or the op shop. You know, if it's something that's in your plan weekly to go there and have a little nose you around, you can fall foul very easily of shopping a bit too many items that you absolutely don't need. You know, if you go to a charity shop or op shop or Goodwill with a plan of something that you're looking for, but if it's line of like, oh, I like to have a little mooch around. And we, before we know it, does your basket with items that you actually never thought about planning. It's a bit like going to a grocery store like every day. You go in for a pint of milk and you come out with three bags full of groceries that you didn't know you needed. <laughs> I think it's a bit about the same thing, isn't it? We yeah. get kind of sucked in the experience. Yeah, we do. I mean, it's classic retail therapy, really, isn't it? And it becomes a hobby. It becomes a habit. And that's when it becomes quite dangerous. And it is a tricky habit to break. Mm. So there's one part of it, which is don't go to a car boot sale if you're that kind of person who loves the thrill of a purchase and loves a bargain, because it's a dangerous place to be, particularly if you're on a decluttering journey, because it's not intentional shopping. But what we're actually going to focus our attention on today is doing a car boot sale, doing a garage sale yourself to sell your stuff rather than to buy stuff. Yeah. And what we see, Leslie, with our clients over the years, with our members, they're like, oh, a garage sale sounds like a really good plan. I'm decluttering. I'm going to put the stuff in my garage. I'm not going to get it out of my house, but I'm just going to move it from one place in my house to the other place in my house, which is the garage. So I, at one point, I can do a garage sale. And then it sits there and sits there and sits there, doesn't it? Yeah. So there's there's lots of problems associated with a garage sale. Let's just say, first of all, there are some garage, some people who do garage sales and car boot sales who are very successful at that. And so if that's you, you go for it. But it's about what we're talking about here today is realism. So you have to be realistic about whether or not you are likely to follow through with your ideas. And you really need to think about the why. Why am I doing this? And is this going to be detrimental to my decluttering journey? We're here focused on decluttering first and foremost. And one of the big problems that we see, whether it's car boot sales or garage sales, is that people become focused on the money that they're going to get from the stuff they are getting rid of. And that is, it's hard really for us to say this because we don't want to be oh, we'll just forget about the money. That's not what we're saying because money is so important and some people are on a very tight budget and so therefore recouping money from things that you have misbought in the past or you no longer have a use for is important, but you have to balance that out. And our advice is always the decluttering needs to come at the top of your list of priorities higher than the re recouping money from the things you sell. So therefore, we are not big fans of car boot sales or any kind of selling, eBay selling, whatever that is, unless it's absolutely essential because it can have a very detrimental effect on your mood and your feeling about how successful you've been in the decluttering process. One of the other things that I wanted to talk about, when I first became a professional organizer, I used to offer eBay selling as a kind of add-on to my business. I didn't do it for very long. I did it for about nine months because I very quickly realized 
that exactly what I've said, it has a very detrimental effect to the way that people perceive the success of their decluttering project. And the reason for that is we inflate the value of our things, basically. So we always think that our things are worth more than they actually are in monetary value. And so what happens then is you store all these things. If you're lucky enough, you sell it on eBay, you outsource it to an eBay seller, you try and sell it at a car boot sale, you want to sell it at a garage sale, and you get pennies for it. And then you become disappointed because what you remember is the end point of that process, which is the selling and not the fantastic feeling that you got when you declutter it and created space and control and organization back in your home so what you've got to do here we talk about realism is you've got to really think through what is my priority if you can afford to let that money go and not worry about it and there are many people out there who can particularly people that have got lots of clutter have spent that money so typically do have excess money to spend really think that through and think do I really really need to get this money back or can I afford to donate it to charity or to put it on free cycle and give it away for free? Because if you can, that's going to mean that you are going to get this fantastic feeling from decluttering that won't be diminished by not getting much money for it when you sell it. So it's quite a difficult concept to explain, really. But I think it's really critical because a lot of people never think about it because people have a natural path that they go on, which is, I bought this stuff. I feel guilty about how much money I wasted. I know that it needs to go and I need to get the money back. The money was wasted at the time that you purchased it. And, and that's something that you really have to sort of focus on. The money's gone. You spent it. Can you afford not to get that money back or some of that money back? If you can, then you're going to be all singing, all dancing with your decluttering journey. That's, that's all we're saying. That's why we are not huge fans of selling generally, are we, Ingrid? Yeah, I think it's really true, Leslie. And I think when you're decluttering and you're organizing and you're putting in the right place in your house and you can use your items, you become much more aware of the things that you've misbought over the years. So you don't make those same mistakes over and over and over again. And I think that's really important because if you've got as an end goal, I'm going to sell this when I no longer need it so you can recoup some money. The item is attached to money while we are really big advocates of, yes, of course, decluttering, organizing, but also let's look at what comes into your house in the first place. And once you start to control that stream of stuff that comes in by unsubscribing, going shopping a bit less, doing a weekly meal plan, not going to every car boot sale or garage sale that's ever existed in your area by thinking about, about buying quality over quantity and all of those things, then you have less stuff to deal with later. While if the selling is the main point of a garage sale and the money that's involved, so you can buy then more stuff that comes in, you stay in that same cycle while we want to kind of think, can we be more sustainable here? Can we be more mindful of what comes in? Can we be better customers and better consumers? And I think having that part, I, I, I did an, um, an, a talk for a group of women and one of them said at the end to me, you know what, Ingrid, I've got a whole cupboard absolutely packed to the rafters with stuff that I want to sell. And she said, it's been there for three years and I still haven't done it because it's overwhelming. It's just too much stuff. And I think that's what happens with stuff that ends up in a garage or in a loft or in a shed to be sold at some point. When it gets too many items, it gets too overwhelming. And I said, if this is something that really is important to you, why don't you find that one handbag or that one pair of shoes that was really expensive and you feel that you have to give it a go? And let all the other tops that were five pound, ten pound, the cheaper items that that money is gone. Let those go. And she went, oh, I, she said, I feel so much better that actually it was almost like she needed permission from somebody else to kind of go. It's OK to let that go. You've had your cost per wear out of it, you know, and just try a couple of items. And if you then realize oh, after a couple of months, I still have not done it, then you can go, you know what? This is just not for me. This is not my thing. A car boot sale with all the best intentions that I've had or a garage sale, 
I'm just basically holding my own stuff hostage in my garage. It's building up and building up. There's a boxes and boxes full. I'm holding it hostage because I can't feel, I can't let it go because I have to do this elusive car, car boot sale, this garage sale. And it's all still cluttering up my house. I've just moved the stuff from one place in my house to the other. And it's still there. And I still feel that I have not had that win of releasing it and feeling positive and and have giving myself that pat on the back going, yes, I did this. This feels great. I think you're right, Ingrid. We have been working with clients for a long time. And this is something we see and we have to tackle as organizers and try and convince then or explain what we've just explained to you about the, the fact that you need to be realistic about what that looks like, what a car boot sale looks like. And we need to sort of almost prize the idea of a car boot sale away from our clients. But I can honestly say, Ingrid, that I've never had anybody come back and say, do you know what? I was real, so disappointed that you didn't let me do, no, let me do. That sounds wrong. That I'm kind of dictating things, which I'm not, but we're there to advise and to give people strategies for moving forwards ultimately. And so we do advise and we sometimes we're a little bit stronger with our opinions than others. And certainly mm -hmm. car boots is something that I feel very passionate about that holds lots of people back in the decluttering journeys hugely. You know, if we go into a house that's very full of stuff and guarantee that a car boots sale will be on that person's agenda and we have to try and convince them that's not the case but I don't see anybody that's disappointed that they didn't do one never people need that permission and find it very empowering for someone to say it's okay to just let it go don't worry about it so what we're kind of saying to you guys today is really think that through we're going to talk a little bit in a minute about realism and what the reality of doing a car boot sale looks like and we've not even talked about that the workload involved in that but first and foremost think about the emotions are you letting the guilt of the money that you spent on that item and the fact that you possibly haven't used it guide you into making a decision to try and recoup those costs that's just not worth it and that's going to impact and have a negative effect on your decluttering journey. Really think that through. That's the most important message of this podcast. Yeah, for sure. Okay, Leslie. So, right. I am listening to this podcast and thinking, but I still want to do a garage sale. I, I, I'm hearing what Leslie and Ingrid are saying, but I am determined to do a garage sale as soon as the weather clears up. I'm going to do it. Let's just talk then through a, a couple of bits that are involved with doing a garage sale. And you're the one who has done a one. So I'm suggesting let's talk this through together. And I'm sure you've got some nuggets and, and some good stuff to, to share with our listeners. Because in my head, a garage sale or a gar boot sale, you need to properly plan it. You can't just kind of go on Saturday evening. Yeah, let's do a car boot sale tomorrow. Or yeah, let's go to a car boot sale. Unless you're like a proper car boot person who does this on a weekly basis you can do that so you can't just on a saturday night gonna go well i'm gonna do one tomorrow it needs proper planning and organization doesn't it yeah definitely i mean the first thing to know is that a garage sale is definitely easier than a car boot sale because you've got to make sure it all fits you've got to take a table with you a car boot sale is more complex than a garage sale because you can just put it in front of your garage and you can pull things back and forth throughout the day. You don't need to take everything all at once. So let's talk predominantly then about a car boot sale. It's hard work. You know, I'm a very organized person and I found it a feat of organization to try and get that off the ground. Because if you want it to work well, you've really got to think through how am I, it's like sell, it's selling sales tactics. How am I going to present the stuff? What's my pricing model going to be? What equipment do I need to, to hang? You know, I've got to borrow clothes rails from people to hang clothes. I've got to make sure I've got something to put on the ground so everything doesn't get dirty. You know, I've got to have money. I've got to have change. I've got to, there's a lot of things that you need. You're almost setting up shop. And so you need to have a sales strategy as well as that. You need to be strong. Let me tell you, you need to be strong because you're going to get seasoned car booters coming to you haggling and you need to be very <laughs> strong in your pricing, what you're prepared to sell something at. Some people are very rude. Some people are very forceful. Is it obvious why I don't like car booting, Ingrid? <laughs> like, I said I was going to try and hold back, but all of a sudden it's all coming out. I can just remember, I can just remember getting to this thing as a kind of a novice car booter and opening up the back of my car. And before the boots even open, there's like seven or eight people 
like scurrying through the back of your stuff trying to see what kind of things you've got because everybody wants to get to your stuff first because they're a traders so they're buying your stuff to go to the stall around the corner to sell it for more money and so you know as, as a novice it's quite tricky it's not for the faint-hearted I didn't like it and I'm quite a strong person you know so you know the one thing I was not prepared for when I drove on that car boot field at six o'clock on a Sunday morning people already knocking on my window before I had even parked my car going have you got this have you got that I was like oh my gosh, I haven't even parked up yet and they're already knocking on my window. I, I, I was completely taken aback by it. And yes, and you need to think about that. You need to put your table in last because that's the first thing you want to pull out. I mean, it's all these, these things that you don't even think about when you think, oh, let's just do a car boot. So sounds like fun. You know, they can be great fun. If it's a great day, if the sun is shining, but if you wake up on a Sunday morning and it's absolutely pouring around in the rain, as it on a very regular basis does here in the UK, let's be honest. And then you're thinking, why exactly am I doing, <laughs> am I doing this? <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? It's, it's, it's an interesting proposition to do a car boot sale. And if you really want to do it well, you need to do things like price things up in advance. Really think about what your sales strategy is. If you have other people working with you, make sure that they know what your sales strategy is as well in terms of when are we going to start reducing items, all that kind of stuff. So it, it's complicated. It's hard organizationally. And is it worth it? Yeah. Now, the flip side to that, as Ingrid says, there are some people who love it, love the community. There is, of course, this fantastic community spirit in there. We're being very negative about it just because of our own experience. Lots of people have very positive experience and make money week after week after week doing car boot sales or garage sales and love that feeling that it brings. But if you're a novice, really think it through because it's not as simple as you might think. And I think the difference between then a car boot sale and a garage sale is that a car boot normally is organized by somebody else. Somebody else has sorted out the field and all the 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 the, the, the refreshment stands and possibly toilets and they're there and they've got it all cornered off and you just pay a fee to park your car somewhere. So they've done kind of the marketing and there's, you know, there's not far from here there's a, a, a massive field that's famous for its car boot sales and where a lot of people know from miles and miles around that that's where the car boot sales take place but of course if you're doing a garage sale in your own house you probably not you can't just kind of think oh next weekend or next or tomorrow i'm going to do a garage sale and think expect people to show up you probably have to do some sort of advertising online or maybe put out some flyers to your neighbor's door or you, you, you need to do stuff before you've even then pulled out stuff from your garage. Yes, you do. I mean, the garage sale I found much easier, I must admit. I think in the States, the garages are bigger, the drive, you know, everything's a little bit bigger. You know, we, do you know what I mean? There's a bit more space, really. And it is nicer if you're in your own house and most of your family will be around. You can bob in for a cup of tea. You know, so I think, <laughs> I think it's just a kind of calmer environment. And of course, people in the States, and my experience is, they, they drive around on a Saturday or Sunday morning looking for car boot sales. And so, you know, people will know that there, there will be some happening in the neighborhood and we'll go searching for them. And I think, I mean, this, to be fair, it's nearly 20 years ago since I did those car boot sales. So I'm sure, uh, garage sales, sorry. So I'm sure that it's changed, but they used to just put things up on lampposts and what have you. So do you think we've convinced people, Ingrid? I hope that we've made people think about it. Yes. And I think that's the main message, I think. And I mean, things have changed during lockdown, Leslie. You know, things have absolutely changed. I mean, in the last year, I mean, the rise of Olio, free cycle, free goal, because we haven't been able to do really car boot sales and, and garage sales. It's really here, I think, a lot more people are interested in, in just, you know, putting things on an app snapping a picture, putting it on an app and go come and pick it up instead of sitting there a whole day, you know, waiting for things or just leaving things on your drive and say, this is free. It's, it's become much easier if you want to give away stuff. So, because of course we haven't been able to do a lot of things. The, the, the charity shops have been closed. So we've been trying to find other ways of shedding some of those excess items in our homes. Yes, definitely. I mean, it was big before. And I think with the rise of sustainability and passing things on, 
I think those sites, whatever that looks like, you know, Facebook Marketplace is quite easy to sell on. Do you know what I mean? So we're not saying don't try and sell your stuff, but we're saying don't do something that's overcomplicated, that's going to detract from your decluttering journey. If you've got huge volumes of stuff in your house that needs to go, then you're going to have huge volumes of stuff that needs to be sold. If like me, you've got you know, two or three things that you might declutter in a week, then you can manage that through Facebook Marketplace. But if you've got bags and bags of stuff, it's too much to manage. And so really focus in on your decluttering first and foremost and put the garage sale or the car boot sale or any other kind of selling as a secondary part of your journey. Now, listeners, before we go, we wanted to tell you about a masterclass that we're going to do. Oh, I'm a bit excited about this, Leslie. It's it's getting close now. And Tuesday, the 9th of March. So what is this all a masterclass all about then? Yes, we are doing a Managing Mementos Masterclass. We love our alliteration here at the Declutter Hub, don't we, Ingrid? And so we've got the triple M, whatever you want to call it, we can call it. But yeah, Managing Mementos Masterclass coming up on the 9th of March, as you said, 8 p.m. UK time. And we're going to really delve into sentimental items, aren't we? Because we know, don't we, that sentimental items is something that people really struggle to declutter. And sometimes it can get a little bit overwhelming, can't it? So we want to go through some of the emotions that are involved in mementos or sentimental items in our lovely 90-minute free masterclass. I think you're just doing the alliteration so you can hear me go blah, 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 blah. (laughs) (laughs) Because I'm like, managing mementos masterclass, how often am I going to trip over that? But anyway... We would love for you, of course, to join us as well. So if you think to yourself, yes, sentimental items, mementos is really a stumbling block for me. Come and join us for this free masterclass. You can sign up via declutterhub.com forward slash MMM hyphen info. So it's triple M hyphen info. We we didn't want you to type in managing mementos masterclass hyphen info. That would be a bit crazy, wouldn't it, Leslie? <laughs> I know, exactly. We can try and keep it simple with our alliteration. Now, we love our alliteration. But anyway, yes, so, exciting. I'm really excited about it. It's different. We've not done a masterclass before. If you've been involved in our challenges before, you've got got a feel for what it's like but instead of doing it over five days we're just doing one evening and so we're looking forward to it oh we're getting it started next week so do sign up if you've not signed up already yes leslie you're completely right we can't wait to see you there so listeners that's it for this episode we hope you've enjoyed our comments about garage sales and car boot sales and that we've made you think If you've enjoyed this podcast and think, wow, this was great advice and it's really made me consider my options and other people need to know about Ingrid and Leslie, please share a podcast with with your friends and family. And on our show notes page on our website, you can find the sharing buttons. If you'd like to have more handy tips and advice from Leslie and I, you can find us in lots of places, but definitely check out our fab supportive Facebook group called the Declutter Hub Community which is a great starting point. And of course, you can find us on Instagram too. We would love to see you there. If you want to take your decluttering to the next level and think, oh, I would love to have some more advice and tips and support and motivation and I want to do courses, check out members.declutterhub.com to find out more about our membership. If you don't want to miss our next podcast, subscribe to the Declutter Hub podcast and it will pop into your notifications each Friday. So thanks so much for listening and see you next time. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Declutter Hub podcast. Check out declutterhub.com for more inspiration and don't forget to tune in next week.